uh, a topic that's been discussed and it's for centuries. And so I'm going to do incredible justice by trying to cover it in like three minutes. <sighs> Maybe not. But I'm going to, we have communion coming up next week. So I thought it'd be interesting and it would be helpful for us to think about it. A, remind, a reminder of, of why we do the moments of learning. Moments of learning are not to divide. They're for us to just to be able to know what the basic concepts are and why we do, that there's reasons why we do what we do and there's thought that went into it. And it's just helpful for us to be knowledgeable about such things rather than just do them. So uh, that's the, the vein of what we're trying to do. What are the different ways traditions understand communion? Well, there's many different ways. I'm going to cover four main ways that they're covered. And I know some people here are familiar with them. Some of them will be good reminders. Some people have never heard of that. Uh, some, some people don't even know it by the name communion. Communion is called by a couple other names. So it's called by communion, but it's also called the Lord's Supper. It's also called the Eucharist. Sometimes it's called the bread and the wine. Sometimes It's a lot of different names, but typically if you've got communion, the Lord's Supper, or the Eucharist, you've got, you know, 90% of all Christians call it that or more. Uh, it's, it's a time of celebration, and it, it goes off of, of, of the ordinance that, uh, um, or the, the time that Jesus gives us, the command he gives us to try and uh, to commemorate the Last Supper, and that going forward that we would remember him. And without getting too much in depth of it, I'm just going to cover some of the differences. Well, there's four different views. The first one is transubstantiation. The second is consubstantiation. The third is commemorative, and the fourth is real presence. There's not going to be a test on this, so you don't have to memorize all those things. But they all mean slightly different things. You'll understand the concept, I think, of a little bit. Transubstantiation, consubstantiation, commemorative, and real presence. And there, Now, there's some that don't quite cleanly fit, fit with anyone, but those are the four major categories that I would say. And obviously, there's more categories because there's many people. They come up with all sorts of interesting things, but those are the, the primary ones. Transubstantiation tends to be Catholic, sometimes Anglican, that sort of thing, but transubstantiation, consubstantiation, you can think of like Lutheran. Uh, commemorative tends to be more Baptistic or Zwinglian, although there are Baptists in name that are in different, are in real presence. Uh, so, but it tends to be more Baptistic. A lot of the um, uh, a lot of the independent churches would tend to fall into a commemorative, not all of them. Uh, and then there's real presence, which tends to be Presbyterian or Reformed churches. Those are just four different things, and I'm not trying to prove one way or the other. Like I'm just trying to cover the differences this morning. Uh, I will talk about a few issues. Transubstantiation is basically saying the bread and the wine at that moment in time actually change into the body of Christ. And it's going off that time that Christ says, this is my body. This is my blood. And it's saying, well, it, it takes it very literal and says, okay, uh, it, 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 he says it is, and so it thus, every time we celebrate, it becomes. That's why you see, whether it be in a movie or you've heard of that sort of thing, if, if somebody were to drop in a, in, in a Catholic or something, if they were to drop, they feel like they're dropping Jesus because they really believe that is Jesus, that yes, it has the appearance of bread, yes, it has the appearance of wine or of juice, but it's actually Jesus. It just looks like the elements. So that's what transubstantiation believes. Consubstantiation is basically Luther's kind of sliding out of the transubstantiation and basically kind of says, well, I think that it's both at the same time, that they're both bread and wine and the body and blood simultaneously and the accidents is what they call it, that what they look like and so forth. It still has all those things, but and essentially it's changed in somewhat that Christ's body is present alongside the, the words they use are in, with, and under the elements. So the idea is that it's kind of both. They're kind of trying to, to straddle both. I can give my opinion of why Luther came up with that one and where he was headed with it eventually. One of the difficulties uh, that those two ones have is that they have to try and reconcile. A, a tough reconciling is that Basically, you have the concept that Christ's body becomes both omnipresent uh, and at the same time, it's Christ's body. The, uh, one of the essential things of a body is that it can only be in one place at one time. And so that's one thing that they have difficulty of saying, well, how is that Christ and how is that Christ? If that is really truly Christ, how can that be Christ, that be Christ, that be Christ, if it's all celebrated in different places at the same time? That's one of the things that's difficult but obviously they get past that. So um, then the other two things that I wanted to cover were the commemorative or memorial meal. meal. Basically, it's basically a simple, it's not, it doesn't mean it's not meaning, it, that it's meaningless, but it, uh, 
uh, it's a, a, a simple, it's simply commemorative of the, of the uh, event. So basically, they, they do this and remember. It's just like a, a celebration of a birthday or something like that. It's a celebration or a commemoration that Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So nothing really happens there. Now, they would argue, they'd say, well, something does happen. It changed, the person has changed. Okay, okay, I get that. But as far as the elements or nothing changes that, and it's not usually looked as a means of grace. And then the fourth one is real presence. And this is Presbyterian reform. That doesn't make it right. That just means this is what we think that, that how we understand the Bible. Uh, real presence. Christ is present in the sacraments in a spiritual sense. So there's a reality that Christ is here, but it's not that the elements themselves are changed. The elements are elements. And so when I tend to pray, I ask the Lord to bless these elements, and the elements are representative, but they are not actually Christ. That said, there is a real sense that something special happens that day. Unlike the, the, the um, commemorative, which would say, well, it's just a, a remember. There's something special that happens. It's not just a celebration of a birthday. It's somehow that something else happens that day when you are having communion. There's a real presence. This, the Spirit is, is somehow, like he was saying, more present. Than, you can say, well, the Spirit's always inside us. Yes, but there's something special about that time period. So those are the four different ones. One last thing I'll do as a kind of a parting, uh, you know, bonus content thing is that there are differences in the various traditions or churches who can participate in the celebration of communion. So one of the things I'm very careful, we have communion next week, so this is all leading to this. One thing I'm, tr I'm very careful is to try and say, okay, if you are of Christ, you are welcome to join us. Because there's other traditions that say, well, I came from a, a Catholic background, or I'm here, I'm here today, but I'm from a different background. Can I take communion with you? Because they, w we wouldn't be able to if we went there. And so, how that that differs from place to place, and that has less to do with a biblical basis than tradition. So, uh, and well, I, everybody would argue that it has a biblical basis for that tradition, but there isn't a one point. In the, in the scriptures that it says, oh, well, Christ said it should be this way or shouldn't be that way. So that's the four different things, and I'd spent more than three minutes on it. But as I said, people have been arguing about it for centuries, so tried to give it a little justice there.